So in class we've already discussed um, DNA, chromatin, chromosomes, and how that fits into the human genome. So what we're going to do in this podcast is talk about the cell cycle, and specifically I'd like to talk about mitosis. And the reason why we're going to briefly discuss these um, two subjects is because we need to look at the process of DNA replication. So DNA replication. And we're going to break that down into four steps. And this is where I'm going to want you to focus in this video is on these four steps and what occurs within these four steps. Now before we get started, I just want you to note that I don't need you to write a lot of notes on this cell cycle and mitosis. I need you to know that it occurs to give you perspective on this DNA replication. So in writing your notes, focus here on DNA replication and just be aware that it's occurring within this cell cycle and mitosis. You may or may not remember back to Science 9 when we talked about the cell cycle, and specifically we were talking about mitosis quite a bit in Science 9. So what I want to orient you to in this diagram is that the cell cycle is like the life cycle. We have a beginning, a birthplace of the cells, so to say, and it goes through this process, this lifespan, and they are given specific names, which I don't need you to know, um, before it enters into mitosis. Now this mitosis is actually just the process of dividing a cell. What I want to draw your attention to here is that in this time length here is called interphase. So most of a cell's life is spent in interphase and only a portion of it is actually spent in going through mitosis in which the cell actually divides into two separate cells. This is where we're going to be focusing our efforts, is looking at this replication of DNA. So notice that it occurs in interphase, and this mitosis is just the process of dividing the cell. Now, an important thing to note in this cell cycle is that there's checkpoints. So there's checkpoints the cell has to say, have you done what you're supposed to do after your first growth? that G stands for growth, after your first growth phase, have you grown enough in order to enter into this synthesis phase, into this DNA replication phase? So these checkpoints stand as points to just let the cell know that they're ready to go into the next phase. Now, the thing about cancer, cancer ignores these phases and it still just keeps on going through this without having done the work that it needs to do in order to divide, which means that we get these divisions of cells that are cancerous because they do not have um, the mechanisms in order to actually function as the cell they should have in the first place. Okay, so here's that cell. Here's the cell that it looked like in interphase. Here are these chromosomes, and here we're only looking at four chromosomes in this cell. So during interphase, we go through DNA replication. So here, this is what we typically look at chromosomes as. Now these are called sister chromatids. So what this means is that in going from this cell here to this cell here, we've gone through DNA replication. It's duplicated its information and only then will it actually go into a cell division mitosis in order to produce two identical daughter cells from that original parent cell. Now notice these chromosomes here in these daughter cells look exactly the same as these chromosomes here. Now this occurs in all of our body cells except for our sex cells, except for our gametes. Okay, so this is where I want you to begin writing some detailed notes about DNA replication. So what I need you to draw your attention to right now is that before these cells divide, that is before they can go through mitosis, they need to make a complete copy of the DNA so that the daughter cells have the exact same genetic content, have the exact same genetic information as those original parent cells had. And so all of this process of DNA replication, it all occurs in this nucleus. Now this is that organelle inside the cell that contains DNA and DNA cannot leave this nucleus. It stays within this nucleus but the information can get out in a different matter in which we'll discuss later. So here are the steps of DNA replication. So we're going to start with step one. Just so you know that this YouTube clip I'll post um, for you on the website afterwards so you don't have to try and link into it now. So our first step we call unzipping. So the way this DNA molecule, so see you see the original DNA double helix twisted DNA molecule um, 
the way it opens up to expose these bases that exist um, in the inner part of its double helix is with this enzyme called helicase. So this enzyme helicase, it breaks the hydrogen bonding that exists between these nitrogen bases. So this here, this is standing for nitrogen in case you need to remember that. And I hope that you all remember that this H here stands for hydrogen. So we need that helicase in order to basically split apart this double helix um, of DNA. Get it? Psst, Bob, you're unzipped. <laughs> okay, so now that helicase has opened that double helix, what happens is that here was our original double helix I'm showing you here. Here's our double helix. When it opens up, it exposes these nucleotides that exist. It exposes these bases. So if we were looking at, at the one side of the DNA molecule, here would be the other side. So always remember in DNA, A always pairs with T, T always base pairs with A, C with G, C with G, and G with C. So these were the original parent strands that were composed in this molecule here. So the DNA helix has opened that up. So what happens now is that we get a new strand that comes in. So because these bases are exposed, I'm gonna have new nucleotides that are going to come in, and that T nucleotide is going to exist here. So these are the lines that are just showing the whole nucleotide, and this T will base pair with an A nucleotide. And this C will base pair with a G nucleotide. And this C will base pair with a G and so forth. I'm gonna to continue to write these in so that I can show you something about it afterwards. So here are my nucleotides that are coming in. Oops, sorry about that. Let me erase that one. It will actually be a T, this will be a C, this will be a C, and this will be a G. So these nucleotides, because the hydrogen bonds are exposed off of the parent strand, they will come in and they will hydrogen bond. So there's going to exist hydrogen bonds between these molecules. And we're going to explain why, how many hydrogen bonds a little bit later. Um, or if you remember back to your origami, you're going to remember um, that C and G base pair with three hydrogen bonds between them. So I'm not going to continue to draw on those hydrogen bonds, but the hydrogen bonds will exist. So this is what we call complementary base pairing. The parent strand, these parent strands here, will base pair, find new nucleotides that will come in, and will hydrogen bond. And this is beginning to form the daughter strands. Now I want you to look at these two strands and see if you can see any similarities between the original parent strand and the new daughter strands that are coming in. So pause the video for a minute and look at those. So hopefully what you were able to see is that this daughter strand right here is the exact same as this original parent strand. And also we have this daughter strand, let's see here, this daughter strand has the exact same DNA sequence as this parent strand. So what happens here is that these two new molecules that are DNA molecules that are being produced are exactly the same as the apparent molecules that existed in the first place. So I just wanna draw your attention to here in this blue color, I am tracing the backbone of the original parent strand. And in this red color, and keeping in sequence what we did before, here are the new daughter strands that are being produced, the new nucleotides that are coming in. So in this, we have daughter strands, so daughter strands, and we also have the original parent strand. And that is what will form the new DNA molecules that will get separated in mitosis. Okay, now what I want you to do is you take a minute. If this is my original parent strand here, right here, here's my original parent strand, here's the DNA sequence of that parent strand, I want you to take a minute, write in your notes, the parent strand, and then I want you to make the complementary base pairs that you would find in the daughter strand. Come back and then I'll have the answers for you. So hopefully you got the base pair sequencing correct, that A always pairs with T, and G always pairs with C, no matter in what order, that's what exists within the DNA molecule.
Okay, now that DNA helicase has come in, it's split apart the parent strand, which exposes these nucleotides, allowing it to hydrogen bond with new nucleotides. And these new nucleotides in the red, these are the ones that are going to create these daughter cells. I mean, sorry, these daughter strands. And as you can see here, I've already outlined the in blue, following with our same diagram, the parent strand. So what happens now in step number three, these adjacent nucleotides join, and they join with the help of DNA polymerase. So what means is that these free nucleotides that exist here that are not bound to one another, there's no backbone created yet. What happens is that DNA polymerase comes by, and it's large molecule, so it would come by and it would work right here. And then it would move its way down. And what happens here is that it helps these new backbones form. So you can see how I'm drawing now a solid red line. It's actually allowing these to covalently bond together. So those new nucleotides are now covalently bonded to each other in the daughter strand. And here's what we end up with. Here was our original parent strand, the old strand, so to say. Here come in these new daughter nucleotides that will base pair with the original parent strand that has now been exposed due to DNA helicase. The polymerase will come in and bind these backbones. We call this process semi-conservative. So semi just means half. So half the original molecule, as outlined in purple here, is conserved. So half of this molecule is conserved. So this whole process of going from one DNA molecule into two DNA molecules is semi-conservative. Half the original, the old strand, has been conserved. And our last step, just to mention, is that um, step four, there is proofreading that occurs. So that DNA polymerase, as it's moving along, um, binding the adjacent nucleotides together of the daughter strand, the new strand, it also comes along and checks for any mistakes, any mutations that might have occurred um, during the process of DNA replication. Okay, so here are the three vodcast reflection questions I'm going to ask you to respond to in your block appropriate course within the website. Um, so please take a minute, um, write these down and solve them so that when you go to the um, reflection vodcast that you have the answers already ready to put in. And one last thing, if you are still confused or you would still like a... Um, different perspective, another review of DNA replication, I'm going to post these two links, this one right here and this link right here. I'm going to post them directly underneath this podcast so that if you want to go in and check out um, another reflection of this, then there'll be more resources for you.